use a wall stick if you want. Very handy things to have. And just where the transition, I'm just going to put in a few warmer areas. And then the sunlight has just picked up on that area. Okay, now while we've got the, um, the purpley colour, you just add a little bit of the dark tone to that, just to tone it down a little bit more. We can make it a little bit more purple. So that it looks like there is some detail going on in this area. We'll just blend that into the uh, orangey bits now. Okay, and we can actually come on a little bit lighter with that now. camera from my palette has just decided to pack in. <laughs> so, I just have to make do with the other cameras. There we go, we can just blend some of those. If they're too much, blend them out with your finger. Now, let's get the nose done. So, we have some darker areas of the nostril. We can put a little bit in there. Right, now we can get a little bit more lighter, using the lighter tone. To do a little bit more of this around the eyelid. Around the eye, we can lighten this area of the nose up where it's catching the light at the bottom of the nostril. We'll go even lighter with that. Just around the edge. Now we can blend some of this dark into the surrounding area. Fingers are great for applying glazes, softening the edges of glazes. It's beginning to take shape now, see? Right, now we want some of that orangey colour but not quite as bright, so we'll add a bit of raw sienna to that. And we'll just start to add a little bit here. A smaller brush that we're going to do the highlights in the eye. Now you need some of that bluey purpley tone we were using earlier. Not too light, not very pointy either this brush, <laughs> so you might want to get a little bit more paint on just to hold the brush up. We'll have a highlight there. We'll have a highlight down the nostril there. Okay, we need a little bit more highlight on the orange part of the eye, so we'll have a little lighter tone, slightly lighter, just to give the eye a little bit of a zing. A little bit of zing in the colour, where the light's picking up the colour of the eye. Some eyes are orangey, red, brown, blue, Puppy colours can change and be all sorts of colours. Let's now put the highlight in on the eye. So we're going to use the white on its own. No additives, pure white. And just a tiny little dot 
ったね。なんだよね。わかん。これ思うんだよね。あの、エッジをディスナーとして。Take a little bit of it off, mix it with the grey. Like that. Now we come to the old splayed brush one. And we want to mix the white quite thick. We don't really need much in the way of megil, neo megil, <clears throat> because we're just going to lay this on quite thick. We're going to just let the brush do its own thing. Now we need to flatten it slightly. We apply these. Play it like that. Okay, now we're going to do the same. Just this area here. Remember that was pink, so that pink underneath will still show through. So, you can sometimes add a little bit of yellow to them as well, just to give it a little bit of warmth. I'm only about a tiny, tiny amount. Let's get that's not bright enough yet on the muzzle. So, quite thick paint there. There we go, right now then. We need a smaller brush just to do the edge of the chin. A little bit of the Some of this into there. Now then, now we get a rigger brush. A rigger is a very thin, very very thin brush, long and thin. Holds quite a bit of paint. It's very useful for doing long hairs. Um, what's another one here? This one's a little bit thicker, as you can see. This one. Uh, had a lot more hair, but it's, been, it's started to become worn down. But as a rigger wears, it gets less hair. It goes thinner and thinner. And、uh, it's brilliant for very, very fine hair work. I'll show you what I mean. So, using the white, put some of the glazing medium in there as well so it flows and binds. And then we're just going to go with this and just do a few very fine hairs randomly. To do some down here. Don't make all the hairs all the same direction. Give them some randomness because that's what hair will do normally. Unless it's perfectly manicured, which very few dogs are. Just a little highlight again on one or two hairs that's just picking up the light. Now we'll make this a little bit more fluid because now we're going to go do some whiskers. So, on this side, they're not going to be quite so bright because the light won't be catching them as much, but with the end of the whisker, it tends to be a little bit brighter. Of course, whiskers on this side are going to be. Right. You could do many, many details and go overboard with it, but it really isn't necessary. 
You can do too much to a painting. And that, I, pro I suppose is one of the main problems a lot of people have, is knowing when to stop. The painting should tell you itself. And we're getting there, it's not far off now, not far off at all. So what I'll do is I'll just need to highlight one or two of the uh, areas on the ears. Let's see what this is like. There we go. I think what we could do as well is just add a little hint of, um, of the green tint into the dark areas here. The green background tint. So we'll just clean this. And only being subtle, but it just will then coordinate the background with the foreground. So if we get some of this green, quite thin, and yours. Hint in the dark area. A little bit of that green. Which is why, you see, we, we did put some bluey greys up here. And now we're putting some of the greens into here. So what this tends to harmonise the entire painting. If you add background colours into your subject, and subject colours into the background, will give it a much more natural look. Hope you can see that. And uh, I think that's about it. As you've seen, glazing is very, very quick to do because you've done all the hard work in the underpainting. Putting all that, you can do as much detail as you like in the underpainting when you go over it with the colours. Of course, that detail will still show, but it's then glazed with colour. And if you do detail over the top with the colour, with the fine hairs or whatever, then you get layer upon layer of fine hairs and you can do many many layers of glazing to build up that this is just one layer of glazing and titian would do sometimes as he said sometimes 40 glazes isn't enough now what that means is you do one layer you let it dry and you do another layer over the top you let it dry and then another another layer and you can build up colors and glow of of the colors because a glow you can only get using the glazing technique because it allows the light to shine from underneath the painting, from the white areas. It glows back at you, and you can't get that with just direct painting. This is the only way to do it. This is the way the old masters used to do it, using the different formulas for paint and stuff. But that's the way, basically, that they did it. So that's it. That's how I paint a Border Collie puppy in oils, using the two-part method. Hope you've liked what you've seen, and if you have, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I shall see you next time. Bye.